get on the same page. Priyanka Radhakrishnan. Madam Chair, I move that the oh, well, question be now put. Maureen Pugh. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, there's been a lot of discussion tonight about the detail within this bill, and I think it demonstrates really clearly the value of the select committee process and why a bill of this magnitude um, has not been to the select committee. And it, and it creates this detailed debate at the committee stage of the bill. Um, but it would be remiss of me to not take this opportunity to comment on the analogy given by Greg O'Connor in the House tonight when he talked about his uh, classic car getting under the bonnet and removing his engine. But it was, it was I think, demonstrated quite clearly, Mr O'Connor, that a vintage car can still achieve uncontrolled loss of traction, as you did. Spinning the wheels, going nowhere, but um, s still the smell of burning rubber and petrol fumes. Um, Madam Chair, this bill uh, it, it describes in detail the benefits that are available. And when you look at the list of the benefits that are available within this bill, particularly part two that we're talking about, it goes to show what an absolutely generous uh, country we live in in support of our least, um, least um, able people to support themselves. Our welfare system is a very healthy one. Um, but I did hear last week in the, in the House as uh, there was a question time happening, one member across the House who talked about how we procrastinate in getting people back into work by giving them not one, not two, or even three, but four um, chances, he called them, four chances not to go back to work. Well, Madam Chair, um, this bill, in the form that it was delivered to the House last year, is about the social investment approach to these people that have found themselves in the situation where they are in the benefit dependency cycle. And the social investment approach seeks to remove them from that. But there's one part of the bill, uh, Madam Chair, and in part two, and it's indexed at HA, which talks about the winter energy payment. And I was a bit um, surprised to hear the minister um, decline my SOP before I'd even had a, had a chance to discuss it. And that was part two, subpart 9A and, it, and clause 65E. And my suggestion was to insert a new subclause 65E2, naming it C. And that was to allow for the winter energy payment to be paid in five monthly payments and to fortnightly payments. And the rationale given by the minister was that it would cost millions of dollars to implement uh, a monthly payment. And the, the, the rationale was that it coincides with monthly power accounts. And so it makes perfect sense to align the payments to a monthly power account. And so, um, Madam Chair, my argument is that we load those payments up for people who are receiving benefits. We, re we load them once into a computer. How hard can it be then to load one payment to go in monthly or perhaps fortnightly? It's not as though we have to do it every single month, twice for every beneficiary. Um, but, it, but of course, um, if you did live on the West Coast, um, a month, um, an annual payment would be quite acceptable. You could buy two tonne of coal on the West Coast for $700, Madam Chair. And, um, and <laughs> if you're a greenie, um, there's not many of them on the West Coast, oh, Mr O'Connor. Order, order. Um, but Don't Mr O'Connor me actually has... Don't bring me into the debate. Oh, excuse me, Madam Chair. Um, Mr O'Connor highlighted tonight some minor tidying up that the bill required. Which one? And uh, some. Okay. There was quite some. Um, and I guess that, that, in, that is actually demonstrating once again the value of the select committee process. Because that small tidying up gets done at that point when everyone has had an opportunity to scrutinise the wording within the bill and, um, and provide the input at that stage. But I also heard earlier in the year, when I was watching from home, um, a speech given by the Honourable David Carter when he talked about these um, Schedule 4 and the winter energy payments. 
that, um, and I ask the question why they are not targeted or means tested when someone who is on an MP salary, receiving super, getting fees free for his... I call the Honourable Alfred Nurrell. Um, the, the Minister made um, some interesting comments and uh, I thank you, Madam Chair.